the very astute among you will notice that I never answered our original question. Do you remember we started with a question that sent us down this rabbit hole and we got to the bottom of the rabbit hole and we found something so awesome in and of itself. We were like, oh, why did we end up here in the first place? Why we ended up in the first place here was, we're trying to get an answer to this question, right? What on earth, like we know this is where we start with indices and then we're like, oh, we can expand this idea, we can expand it, we can expand it. And then you're like, what? What do I do with this, okay? We're gonna come up with an answer to this question. I'm gonna show you how. For reasons that will become clear in a second, I think it's just a, an easier demonstration. I'm actually going to take a different base. Instead of five, I'm gonna deal with two. Um, you'll see why shortly. How do we get to there from here? I said that this thing, what do we call it again? It has a name? You draw a big box around it, right? This is Euler's formula. Euler's formula is like it's like nuclear power. It has this immense um, capacity uh, and potential to do lots of different things with it. It's also very dangerous, okay? So I'm gonna use this Euler's formula as our bridge to get to this guy, okay? For starters, the first thing that I notice is um, in the index here, Euler's formula is, uh, I guess, what we would call very versatile. You can take any x that you like, right? Um, any angle that you like, and you can pop it into this formula. So it's very general, right? I don't need a really general thing. I actually have an idea here. I don't know why that dot is over there. I just want um, this guy here, a specific index of i. So what value of x would I choose here, not a rhetorical question, that would get me just an index of i? x should equal 1. Do you agree with that? If I put in, and please write this with me, right? If I put in x equals 1, I'm going to get on the right-hand side over here cos 1 plus i sine one, okay? Now, I know that looks strange, okay? We're used to angles like 30 degrees or pi on three, things like that, right? So we're not used to dealing with radians, remember, um, that just have numbers like this, okay? But you could go to your calculator right now if you were in radians mode and you could work out what cos one was. It's like zero point, what was it, Zhao? Zero point five, six, and something like that. It's just a number, okay? So your calculator can deal with this. This is e to the i. In fact, let's just go ahead and let's evaluate that. Zero point, can you give me that number again? Zero point five? Uh, uh, five, five, zero, three, did you say? Five, four. Oh, five, four. So it's gonna round, it's just gonna stay to four. Is that okay? I'll just get two decimal places. Can someone give me sine of one radian? What's that? 0 0.84, so it's gonna round to, okay, there you go. So it's just some number, right? You're like, huh. Uh, seemingly strange and random, but from what we've just determined from Euler's formula, it just works, okay? Now, I'm still not quite at, at my answer, right? Like e to the i, but what about two to the power of i? So what I have to do here is change base. Now, I know exponentials and logs, um, dealing with them in a lot of detail is something we haven't done for a while, so I'm gonna refresh your memory, okay? If you wanna change base from something like e to something like two, okay? Maybe you remember, if I ask you for something like this, right? Your calculator has uh, two log buttons. One of them is base E, one of them is base 10. Why is base 10, by the way? I don't know why it's 10. Why do we love 10? Engineering. Engineering and science, right? Have a look at the top of your calculator. It probably says there, your calculator is not a mathematical calculator. It's a scientific calculator, and scientific notation is all about base 10. Okay, so that's why you've got a log base 10 button. You don't have a log base 2 button, so how do we turn this into something our calculators can deal with? I'll give you a clue. It's got one of these in it. Log of um, 100, and it actually doesn't matter what base you choose, so long as it's the same base. Log of 100 divided by log 2, and off you go. So this is how you change base in log land. Now, I will leave it as an exercise to you to work out why exactly this, this will work out, but changing an exponential land basically uses this trick, but in reverse, okay? If you wanted something like uh, 2, but in base e, what you would do is you'd say e to the power of log 2. I want you to think about why this works, right? If you didn't know what this thing was equal to, right? If you said, oh, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's just call it x, right? How would you get at what was going on here? Well, hopefully what you might instinctively do is take logs of both sides, right? which would give you this. Like so. Is that okay? I took logs of both sides. And then you've got a, a power up here that you can bring out to the front. So you get this. Log to log e. But what's, what's this guy over here? Log base e of e is just 1. 
So therefore, you're getting log x equals log 2. So you see x equals 2. Is that OK? So I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I can rewrite any number with a base of e. And therefore, I can take advantage of this stuff up here. So let's return to this idea. 2 to the power of i. I'm going to write 2 to the power of i as e to the log 2 to the power of i. So is that OK? I'm just swapping this guy for this guy. Right? So I get e to the log 2 i. How's that? Is that OK? This thing is my weird, awkward way of writing 2. Even though it's so weird and awkward, though, it helps me because I can use something I already know. I'm just going to do some index laws on this, right? Is that OK? See that? Now, by Euler's formula, I can say, oh, that's the x that I'm putting in here. Do you see that? Remember how we chose a value of 1 up here for this? Well, I'm not going to choose 1 anymore. What am I going to choose? I'm going to choose, oh, be real careful, right? It's actually this whole thing here. That's your x, right? You see how it's the whole thing on the end there? So now what I want is going to be, as per Euler's formula, cos of plus i sine of what? Log 2. That's the thing that you can see up there. So reach for your calculator and go ahead and work out these two things. Did you get point? 7, 7, yeah. and then point six four from memory. Is that right? Yeah. OK. So here's one I prepared earlier. That right there. Am I in the right form? Sorry, just let me check. Yeah, there we go. OK. There, don't move. There is 2 to the power of i. You're like, huh? What does that even mean? Why am I there? OK. Well, I just want to show you real quick, and this is why I put it up on the screen, right? What happens if we have, like, a different kind of i, like a different imaginary power up there. What if we had 2 to the power of 2i? Well, look closely at where the number goes. Watch, watch closely. I'm just going to change it to 2. You had 0.77 plus 0.64i. So it was around here. And then for the next one, I'm, I'm here. Where might the next one go? Let me just do one more, and then I'm going to animate it. Let's do, sorry about that weird stuff. There's 3. So this is 2 to the power of 3i now. So I was over here, and then I was here. What's happening? What, how would you describe the geometry of this? Isn't this thing rotating? Which kind of, isn't that exactly what we should have expected? Because way early on, we were like, oh, multiplying by i, what does it do? It, it rotates you around the complex pain, plane. Well, complex pain, all right, right? <laughs> Exponentiation does something very similar, but in a, a fluid way. It rotates you around the complex plane. These are all the different, um, the order, all the different powers. 2 to the power of i, 2i, 3i, 4i, and it does this rotation around. 